name is Jake Shields. I grew up in uh, Calaveras County, which is the foothills of uh, California. And I'm currently in San Francisco, California. Wait, first off, when I step in the cage, it's usually a great feeling. You have the adrenaline going, uh, the excitement, you hear the crowd. It's, uh, it's a really exciting feeling. I figured I wanted to become a fighter probably around, um, well, I met Chuck Liddell back in, what, about 99, and uh, I kind of started doing it kind of for fun, playing around, and once I started doing it, I was hooked, and that's what I wanted to do. For me, I think fighting is kind of part of my lifestyle. I kind of grew up out, you know, out in the mountains where people are uh, not allowed to do, so kids fight a lot. Well, I first went to Caesar Gracie's, you know, when I, when I moved to San Francisco, I'd, I'd been watching all those guys fight, you know, like David Trell, uh, Gil Castillo, it was just a terror of a team back then, you know, at the IFC and stuff, so right away, you know, even though it's a 45 minute drive from San Francisco, I knew that was the team that I wanted to be part of, so I, uh, you know, I always wanted to be the best, there was no way I would, I would train, you know, I'm willing to do the drive, that's what it takes, so I was driving over there, and it was um, my first day there, like, like I said, it was, it was another humbling experience, because before I was, I got beat up by Chuck, but now I thought I was, uh, thought I was ready for a world title again, and that's when they sicked uh, David Terrell on me, and just, uh, you know, I think Caesar did it on purpose to, you know, put had David Tell to just take it to me. You know, he choked me unconscious a couple of times, popped my elbow, popped my knee. I was, uh, I was, I was hurt for a few weeks after trap training with Dave. You know, I think we have the tightest team in the uh, in the world probably. We've been together, you know, almost we've been together like nine years as a team before any of us were uh, stars, any of us were famous. You know, most of these teams were constantly uh, hanging around, but to me, you know, Gilbert, Nick, Nate, these guys are like my brothers. And so there's a whole bunch of other guys as well that you know maybe not be in limelight. We have a whole bunch of uh, young, hungry, dedicated uh, fighters over there. Got quite a few belts. You know, I went. To, uh, the first belt I took was uh, out in Shudo in Japan, which is quite a prestigious belt. You know, before me was held by uh, Anderson Silva and Hato Sakurai. Before that, so that's uh, that was a quite prestigious belt to hold in Japan. And then after that, I switched to Rumble in the Rock, where I won the Rumble in the Rock tournament, and uh, that was another big belt. You know, it was a stack tournament. Guys like Yushin Okami, Anderson Silva, Carlos Condent, uh, Dave Monet. It was definitely a legit tournament. And then um, from there, I went to Lead XC. Won their title, and then switched to Strike Force. Won their title, and uh, now I'm in the UFC. And obviously, uh, I like to always be the best wherever I'm at. So I don't expect any less here. Of course, uh, belt, belts have meanings. It's always it's about the fight. Of course, fight always comes first. So I would rather uh, I'd rather fight GSP for a non-title fight than you know fight fight whoever for a t for a, for a title fight. So the fight comes first. The belts, it's, it's a big honor, you know, like having that belt, you're representing that show. It's like. Uh, you know, I was, you know, I was a strike force champ. It's, it's, I mean, I'm the champ of strike force. They might not treat me like the champ, but hey, I was still the champ, and I pride myself in it. And, uh, and I'm still the champ. I have the belt, you know, I have the belt upstairs. So, and, uh, and the UFC belt too. That's like the biggest belt in the world. I mean, if you have that, you're the champion of the world. I think the key to keeping my win streak going is, uh, is don't let it get to your head and just keep working hard. You know, I'm always trying to prove. Never, obviously, I'm doing well, but I don't think I'm doing good enough. You know, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm my hardest critic. I, mean, I never think I'm doing good enough. I'm always making mistakes. I'm never happy. I'm always uh, always trying to find a way to get better. I don't think I'm. Uh, I don't think I've seen the best. Uh, I think I'm gonna be a better fighter in a year than I am now. I don't think I've peaked out yet. I'm, I'm constantly trying to learn and uh, I'm open-minded. I have no fear at all to go out there and trade and bang with people. But I just uh, I want a long career. You know, my specialty is jiu-jitsu. So why am I gonna stand there and trade punch for punch and get my uh, get my head knocked in when I take them out and tap them? I'm. Uh, you know, what they call a specialist in uh, jiu-jitsu. I feel like I'm better at jiu-jitsu than anyone in this game. And uh, if I could take him down and beat him, why not do it? So my style is just a little different in jiu-jitsu, the American jiu-jitsu, I call it. And the reason is, uh, you know, first off, I've never trained with a gi. You know, most black belts train with a gi. And uh, even some of the Brazilians try to tell me I couldn't be a black belt. But, you know, I'll tap most of them out with uh, with my non-black belt. So I call myself a black belt in American jiu-jitsu. And it's uh, it's the mix. I have, my, I have my wrestling background, no gi, and it's... Uh, it's about forcing things. You know, a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the typical way is to sit back and wait for a guy to make a mistake. But I think MMA, you have five minute rounds. You can't, you can't wait 30 minutes for a guy to leave his arm out there nowadays. You gotta, you gotta force something. So uh, I try to force the submissions and force the takedowns and force the action. Uh, I think it's cool to be ranked top five in two ways. Not very many fighters can say that. And it's, uh, you know, I think a lot of, the, you know, I see a lot of the best of the best are the guys that try taking on two weights. And I just feel like. Uh, something I'm willing to do and you know I'm hoping the UFC all uh, fight both ways too well. The reason I wanted to fight St. Fair the last few years I think he's the best of the best you know and my uh, you know pound pound rankings are kind of pointless but if I had to do a pound pound ranking I'd put GSP number one I mean I mean so that's the guy I want, I want to fight the best you know and to test myself I'm out here to see if I'm truly the best and I think uh, right now GSP is the guy I put his best that's why I want to fight him and I think it'll be a tremendously tough fight but I mean I believe in myself and that's why I want to do it.